This is for those that's lost like the Bermuda Triangle. Triangle. I'm here to wake you all up. Billion dollar ambition. The history of series. Let me give you a jewel, though. Yeah. It's not hip hop that they were afraid of. They were afraid the fact that white kids were getting this information. It's like as long as you sing to the hood, no one really cares because they already say we one big nigga. Mm. But once we express it and they see their little daughters mm -hmm. is walking around, fuck the police and cock killer, and then now you're infecting the rest of the world, and that's when you become a threat. Right. Mm. So that's when when they saw me have you know thousands of white kids mm. yelling "fuck police" with me, mm. they were like, "We got to deal with this cat, right? Because mm. he's he's infecting." That's why one of my albums was called "Home Invasion" because it was me saying, "Yo, we've invaded your kids. You know, we're in there." Mm. Right. Damn, damn. I think what we have to do is define and understand what these messages are that are coming out of the music. If the messages are excessively violent and negative to society, then we need to talk about them and talk about them honestly. How did we get those messages? Society itself is failing. It's Frank Sinatra, a gangster singer, you know what I'm saying? It's uh, Steven Seagal, a gangster actor. It is no such thing as gangster rap. Rap is rap. Period. People trying to like put a stamp on, you know, the type of music that we do and try to try to put a hold on. With all the controversy surrounding so-called gangster rap and its alleged negative effect on America's youth, we asked six very different young music fans from around the country what they thought about the music and its message. Gangster rap is rap that depicts a lifestyle of crime and drugs and sex. I've never heard anybody use the term gangster rap except in the news. Basically, I think gangster rap is just hardcore beats with, you know, just dope lyrics on it, you know, just stressing a point of what people go through. But I think there are those rappers who don't draw the line between education and provoking violence. There's no such thing as gangster rap. Gangster rap is something somebody gave a name to. There's no, there's no definition for it. If someone was rapping gangster rap, it'd be kind of nice if they had some previous knowledge about it. Never let the man that you're against form your opinions. This is the trick that's played on everyone who's oppressed. The first thing, an occupation, uh, when you have a revolution in the country, the first thing you take over is the radio. And then you start telling the people that everybody, the war is over. And, <laughs> and, and, and so all of them surrender. No, they believe that thing right there. And once they take that over, they start telling you uh, where you are and where they are, and you fall right in line. It's plain thought control. The gangster rap and misogynist lyrics that glorify violence and denigrate women is nothing more than pornographic smut. Hey, Dolores Tucker. Yeah, but here, Dolores let, me, Tucker. Let, me, let me give you a jewel, though. Yeah. I'd say it's reality. If gangster is reality, I guess that's it, gangster. All we doing is being reporters like Connie Chung and reporting what's going on. Poverty in America's inner cities has often led to crime, partly due to the lack of opportunities for the kids growing up there. But when in the early 80s the government dismantled many of the social programs that helped support these minority communities, the kids who made and listened to rap music were left with little else to do but hang out and seek support in gangs. Brief history on the origins of hip-hop in the Bronx in the 70s. All right, hip-hop's energy begins in the street gang culture, very specifically the black space. Okay. The gang originated in 1968 in Bronxdale Houses in the Soundview section of the Bronx, previous to the 70s. Going way, way back to the early days of 75 and the black space. In 1980, the NY birthplace of hip hop homicide rate was up 1,784, and that's before rap blew up. The New York preliminary murder rate that released today is 700 more than Los Angeles and twice that of Chicago. Whatever the real reason is why, 1981 is less than 24 hours old and another nine people have been killed. Good evening. We're coming off the bloodiest year in the history of New York, 1,784 homicides. And we're starting off the new year with at least 10 murders in the city today. Tonight, Brooklyn police are looking for a man who may have stabbed his mother and her girlfriend to death. They try to project the image to the public. This is being done by State thieves and thieves State. alone. And they ignore the fact that no, it's not the free alone. It's a, it's so a corrupt, it. vicious, hypocritical system that has castrated the black man. And the only way the black 
man can get back at it is to strike it in the only way he knows how. Hey, yo, I'm like Malcolm. Out the window with the joint, hoodie up, blood my eye. I let you fly like fuck it. It's not about a salary, it's all about reality. The message is only a reflection of reality. History of the message. Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> it's like a jungle sometimes, it makes me wonder how I keep from going under. It's like the music has a message behind it. It's telling you, get it right. We ain't standing for this no more. So the message was one of the first shits that hit me, which I'm pretty sure is, was the same with Big and Hov, that it's about painting the picture. And maybe he don't like how the picture was painted, but that's kind of how I ever painted the picture. The times was different from when Melly Mel was in the streets to when Hov Big and people from our generation was in the streets. When Melly Mel was in the streets, they didn't sell crack. They ain't lying. That's what he said too. They didn't sell crack when Melly that's, Mel that's was what, in the streets. That's street. what he said too. He said that. Oh, he like yeah. So they didn't sell crack when Melly Mel was in the streets. So his his come up and his aggression may be on a different level from what Big Hove and all of us from our generation was. Then, into this cultural and economic vacuum came the crack trade. That's the way it goes, that's the name of the game. Young brother getting over by slanging K. Go around us making 14K heavy. Bitches clocking on the dick 24-7. The evolution of reality rap. And this whole thing came from the West Coast, which I'm sorry to say was negativity. That's right. Those are two my brothers. But they were teaching negativity. They say we bad influence, we promote violence and everything. Number one is we don't. It's just like they try to hide what's going on and we tell it like it is, you know. A man who was standing in line to see colors, the movie about gangs was shot in the head by someone wearing the colors of a rival gang. So far this year, almost 100 people have been killed in gang-related violence in the Los Angeles area. Now, when they wanted to do the movie, first they said, let's shoot it in Chicago. And... Then uh, Dennis Hopper said, let's shoot it in L.A. 15th April, 88, colors drops. People said, we have gangs in L.A.? That, <laughs> oh, so that, it would have been about Chicago? Well, they, did, they wanted to make a movie about gangs, but they didn't know there were gangs in L.A. Oh, that shit. year, 360 kids had died, almost one a day in L.A., but no one even, it wasn't spoken. It's like Black Lives Matter. No one talks about us. We were just getting killed. Wow. There's been another violent weekend among the gangs of California. Okay. Something happens in South Central Los Angeles, nothing happens. It's just another nigga dead, 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 dead. Those people felt that they were better than us. They were these little hippity hoppers. Yeah, we're young, grimy teenagers. Grimy teenagers, hippity hoppers, gang, teenagers. thugs. Right, right. And now he's here to perform the very powerful song, Color. So would you please give a warm Club MTV welcome to Ice-T. <laughs> I am a nightmare walking, psychopath talking, king of my jungle, just a gangster stalking, living life like a firecracker, quick as my fuse, been dead as a death, back the colors I choose, red or blue, cause of blood, it just... Because all my other records, I was still bubbling, but that was a national hit. I mean, that right. crossed all, and that, and everybody wanted to see the guy that made color. So right. I went out on the Dope Jam tour with Eric B and Rakim, Dougie Fresh, Kumo D, uh, Biz Markey, uh, and 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 I was out there with them. A couple of years ago, it was like hip hop. You don't stop. Yes, yes, sure, you know. And now it's getting more, more complicated and more complex. You know what I'm saying? Fresh for 88, you suck N.W.A. hit, N.W.A. this came out like blam. It was like six ice teas on stage, buck wild. And they took it to the next stage. Whereas my records were about crime, but at the same time, I tried to just show you the balance of it. Like if you do it, you may end up in jail. N.W.A. is like, fuck it, we're going to jail. And let's just apolitical, just I'm a gangster. Come on, sing this shit. And that was really another level. Here's a little something about a nigga like me. Never should have been let out the pit of trickery. Ice Cube. Would like to say that I'm a crazy motherfucker from around the world. Oh, yeah. Since I was a youth, I smoked weed out. Now I'm the motherfucker that you read about. Doing a crime or two, that's what the hell I do. You don't like that living well. Bro, 
fuck you. Then you said, God damn. Everywhere we go, they say, damn. Reality rap to white people is them becoming aware of the horrible every day of inner city youth. It's just like those that survive the streets and tell kids they live that life and it ain't the way to be. Not every kid gonna listen because I didn't listen to my mother. And because I grew up in poverty, I adapted and pursued the life of crime. But as I learned on my own through life experience and prison, that everything they said came to my mind and they was right. So education is the power. And I use my platform to educate.